Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with a, another Let's Build series with the Gundam RX-78 by Bandai Caravan Entry Level Model Kit. This is a very special model that is given away by Bandai distributors and promoters at events, anime cons, competitions, the Gunpla Builders World Cup. For people who are new to the hobby and passing by the uh, display or spectacle and wish to get involved or start out, this very basic runner kit wrapped in plastic, injection molded overseas rather than locally is beautifully detailed and a fantastic representation of the RX-78 Gundam from the original mobile suit Gundam. The detail is quite rich and it's a good indication of what you're going to get from the more modern kits. The model is designed in halves along the limbs and snap fit, ABS, they pop straight off the runner and interconnect. All the other parts have a very basic colour separation, uh, painting Gundam markers could be required and a few different colour parts to build up the torso. With budget restraints, articulation is very limited. Since 2020, this model is obsolete and discontinued by Bandai and is no longer given out with different figurized kits on offer. This has had an amazing run since 2015 and was issued to me via Hobbyco through Bandai for many events and cons that I was promoting and showcasing the hobby. It's only worth a couple of hundred yen, yet many hundreds of these have passed my hands, a few more floating around my studio and property including a very large bag that I've collected of uh, broken and abandoned models people did at events and I use many of these pieces as demonstrations for paint, putty, carving and all sorts of upgrades and builds. So this is a bit of a tribute to the Caravan RX-78 entry level build. What I want to do or achieve with this video is a longer run let's build style to let paint instead. I started this around 2015 when this was very new and to be an example for people to look up to in painting and building and how far you can push this model. Being as awkward as it is to glue together and fill the seam lines, I've completely abandoned it. Pulling it out in my new studio, it's very exciting that it's no longer something people build or even aware of give it a bit of a showcase and a full masking airbrush shade experience to make it as realistic and a pop special feature kit instead of just some plastic clutter sitting at the bottom of a box of incomplete projects. Before I started, this was snap built in Sydney with a bunch of other notable Australian Gundam modelers. At a later stage, I plastic cemented each of the parting lines and filled it with squadron paddle line putty. This was not very effective and I wasn't that skilled of a modeler back then, but putting a layer of Zurich primer over it, I could see how many of the shrink based putty would collapse in itself and the amount of nubs and flash marks were just evident throughout this project. This gave the opportunity of my current set of tools, equipment, products and skills to make up where I fell behind many years ago. The airbrush compressor combination I'm using is an Ophir 0.5mm Chinese double action gravity feed airbrush. It's a bit unusual, a little more expensive than the higher things, though it works amazingly with a very thick needle nozzle combination that does not wear out and does not require as much cleaning. The compressor is a micro mini plastic Royal Max single piston and it has quite enough power without a dial or control to do all painting effects that I require. All paints use a lacquer and it's all thinned with a premium generic lacquer based thinner from Super Cheap Auto. It works very similar to Mr. Leveling Thinner with retardant already being added in it. This is a process I apply to my current style of modeling and attack with every project I'm currently working on. Even though we're not quite finished with the building stage, we're picking up an airbrush and we're coating the entire project, every single part in primer. This is breaking all the parts down and attaching to alligator clips. Today I'm using Filipino based Zurich Premix primer. It's in a bottle, 
has a ball bearing, you shake, you apply, you spray. It's a little darker and it's pretty nice and it's an ideal primer you want for beginners or people with very little amount of time. A little micro filler as well which is fine particles for filling scratches and imperfections. What I'm using currently is buying very large tins of automotive based filler primer, thinning it down about three parts thinner to one part primer in these very large 100ml bottles and using that. With the amount of 3D printing, scratch building and modelling I go through, I eat a lot of primer throughout my modelling time and time on YouTube. Uh, this has cut costs quite dramatically and I generally don't have to rebuy all these wasteful tiny bottles. Primer is a bit like a paint adhesive. It's a barrier between the smooth plastic that is Bandai straight out of the molds and certain types of paints may not stick to it very well and flay, peel off during masking or chip off over time. Primer is a bit rough and it attaches itself to the plastic through melting it ever so slightly with solvents and the texture allows paint to stick on it without showing any shimmer in gloss coats or imperfections. The second goal is being a universal colour, I'm able to see split seams, nubs, any imperfections that shouldn't be there that a light will cast a shadow over. I can use scale modelling techniques such as sandpaper, hobby knives, putties to uh, remove. I've got a whole line of automotive sandpaper from 280 grits all the way to a thousand to pretty much cut and polish all the way to bare plastic and apply another coat of primer to see how that turns out. The last purpose is these kits are multiple colours, especially Gundam kits. You've got red, blues, white, and if I was to change the colour scheme, it might bleed through the paint and look absolutely terrible. This is giving it a universal colour so I can build up an original paint scheme on top especially if I'm painting different components differently to the original build. With a well-maintained airbrush, the paint's appropriately thinned externally and poured in, a nice air source, you'll have no problems with any of these stages. It's very beginner friendly. In drying time wise, lacquer evaporates immediately or very quickly. It's dry to the touch in seconds to minutes. Though I don't like to do any manual work for a good several hours to 24 hours. Other people work much quicker but this is just my style in allowing paint to chemically harden and not to gum up my sandpaper or tools when it's in a more putty state or ruin the finish. Your second primer application looks absolutely amazing, flawless, no dints, no nubs, no split seams, it's flawless. You've done a test fit, you have had a look, it's turned around the turntable, ready for painting. If not, second round of putty, sanding, repeat, until we're back at this stage. Dismantling the model, we're looking for points of articulation, colour separation points, pegs, holes, polycaps, openings, parts that are not painted that's ideal to mount on the alligator clip. Areas not to be painted, drill a hole, stick in some wire, fill out a hollow area with blue tack, anything you really need to do. And the beautiful thing with this particular model is there's multiple colors that need to go on a piece and it's a perfect teaching tool of what we're gluing together, what we're going to be masking, what we're going to be hand painting. And this is a process you really need to think about from as you're building the model to when you're starting to apply primer. At that stage, your mind needs to be pretty committed to what's permanently assembled and what's not. If you're painting in multiple pieces, this can be clicked together at a much later date with PVA glue or other clear adhesives that do not affect the paint. Looking at the actual paints themselves, we can get hobby paints that are pre-thinned and just pour straight in the airbrush. And there's many others like Mr. Hobby and whatnot that you have to pre-mix externally pour into the airbrush. None of it is particularly hard, even automotive or art paints if you really have to. Once we do a few test sprays on a piece of paper, I'm doing a very light shade on the pieces to build up intensity from the primer to the colour. My intent is to give the effect that light is casting shadows and there's a gradient change of colour from the top and the bottom. I choose three separate colours, darken the bottom or build up the base coat and then lighten up the other areas of different colours. This is very playful and you spray in a very light mist tone to a very heavy wet coat as you see fit. With experience and the more models you build, 
the better idea you're going to have at what panels you paint and whatnot. Your first one or two models, shading wise, is generally going to look a bit terrible unless you have a very good grasp and idea of lighting, shadowing, and how things are cast in that way. Painting basic objects as a test piece like a Haro ball or an SD is ideal. Choosing colours, opposed to buying things off the rack or what is marketed or dedicated as a Gundam colour, military colour, whatever. Go with your gut, your eyes and what you feel is right when you're picking those colours off the rack and putting together gradient effects. Some monochrome and gradient effects does come in box sets but you can choose this out yourself and shade uh, willfully. If you're going for a very anime accurate or reference heavy accurate for a competition or a commission being faithful to the source material, you do have to be very strict and very careful with your reference material. Downloading many pictures of multiple views of the machine. Uh, fandom wikis, Wikipedia, Gundam wikis, all amazing showing front side back that is reference for the animators, the drawers, the people coloring it in correctly. It's excellent for us scale modelers. Ideally, I've got a giant one foot size RX-78 retail uh, mascot sitting in my shop and I was able to walk around him and pivot him around to get the ideal colors I needed for this project. Then having a screen uh, by hand and going through the photos of what side I needed to get that one tiny uh, color right. In the way of the separation, some parts don't break down that well. You can chop parts Put a peg and stick it together with a pin vise and metal wire or you can opt in to either mask or hand paint and this goes down to personal what you would rather do. A masking is a process once the painting is completed and thoroughly dried and hardened you put some tape cut it around the contours of the piece and you spray on top. There's a few tricks and technique behind it. It all goes down to the tape you buy. To me, it does a good one, but any of the Japanese yellow tape stuff that you find on the hobby shop market or online is going to be ideal. And you spray directly down and not underneath the mask. Go as light as possible in your coats and make sure you cover everything evenly and cover the whole part. With the amount of spray particles just flying around everywhere, you get overspray and a build up a color will occur on surfaces you do not want to have there. And this also includes when you're spraying, don't have any other drying parts in the way that you're spraying because you're just going to pollute it. Allow that to fully dry and build up the tape further. The first few times, just like anything else, your masking is going to be absolutely terrible. But the more you practice and the more you do it, the better you're going to get and any error that you get in your paintwork is going to show later on down the track and that goes all the way back to any scale modeling flaws. So you want to be careful, slow and absolutely take your time. The stressful bit of lifting the mask and seeing if it's ideal or not. We all make mistakes and if you ruin the paint job it's as simple as sanding back and starting afresh on that very same piece nothing wrong or shameful in that. For small surfaces, there's also nothing wrong with hand painting and dull coating it or polishing it at a later date. Most of the time, no one's going to be able to tell the difference with the naked eye. Quick handful of airbrushing and masking tapes. Avoid using black and white. That's the absolute lightest and darkest shade you can go. Up for a dark or a light gray or a very dark blue and if you want to go darker you can shade with an absolute. When masking the first color you should mask is the lowest color down the rum of uh, detailing so you can build up paint on top of it. Uh, painting a or masking a highlight you might have some color fall into a gap or trench panel line and that doesn't look that crash hot. I did it a few times with this project but I was very confident. Don't be afraid of airbrushing very very small pieces and even breaking that down and masking it. If you're doing the lightest color or the darkest shade spray off the part as the overspray will build up on the corner and have a very nice gradual build up of shade. Airbrushing is easy enough though once you mix it with rattle can and hand painting and apply all these techniques with masking and the more time you put into it you're going to have a stellar piece that will stand out from 
everything else. A uh, blend shading, blend metallics, have fun with as many paints and collect as many as you can. There is also finishes such as matte and clear to apply on top and getting those two to contrast on a piece, some glossy, some matte, some in the middle, especially if you're shading matte on gloss for a broken up, distorted effect, it can be a lot of fun. Uh, finally, hand painting, very, very easy, not so hard. All in the brush maintenance, keep a fine tip, condition your brush if you have to, clean and wipe it down as best as you can in the cleaning process. It's all down to thin your paint, paint within the borders, build up. If there's obvious streaks and you're hand painting with lacquers or enamels, as I do, just brush on the slightest amount of thinner and it melts away, or if fully hardened and dry, you can buff that back with a thousand grit sandpaper and it looks as smooth as the rest of your airbrush work. There is no shading, but you can lay down some mask and just shade the tiniest corner. Personally, I'm a big fan of viewing anime, Mobile Suit Gundam series, especially the Universal Century, though I've never built an RX-78, even though watching the original, I find that the design of the robot is more marketed as being designed for kids, a toy, it's very bright colours, the story of why it came out as that scheme in an experimental MS thrust upon the show is uh, very janky compared to all the other mobile suits that come in later series. So I've never built an RX-78 as it's got a problem that limbs are sometimes too small or far too thick compared to the torso uh, vintage to new kids. But this one just got right. The colour scheme is very difficult with white and yellow, two of the hardest possible colors to paint. With a poor surface, a bad paint, airbrush issues, just hand painting in general, white and yellow is going to look dirty no matter what, dull, a bit grey. It doesn't look like white when you're applying absolute white. And painting these sort of things you need to plan way in advance. There's a bit of a trick in graphic art, digital art, where you use colors and blends to trick the mind that they're looking at something very bright or very dark without actually utilizing those colors. And I practice this also with scale modeling, even touching up mistakes when it's not the same color in the image above. And with my yellow, I like to start with a brown, a very dark shadow, and build up to a yellow and a highlight of a bright yellow. It looks like yellow, but closer inspection, it's not quite. This is a weapon of war. It's dark, it's edgy. Painting that's clean or straight out of the factory or new or pristine, and I don't have to use the color of white. I'm using all these different shades of gray to the brightest gray possible and the tiniest highlight of white. Have a close study of anime cells from the 80s and 90s. Notice in Zeta F91, they use a mint green flushed out in white or a very, very light blue. In the same frame of mind, pre-planning your build, you need to think the story of whatever you're building, what is its history, where is it in the universe. Your model is capturing a time in place and making it real, even though it's fictional. And I've learned this from some of the experienced Japanese modelers, my time with Mr. Kawaguchi, uh, other people, that all of this is designed and planned before you open the box. And you decided if it's in space, if it's in Earth, which environments it's in, pre-post battle, all that sort of thing. And you design how dirty, clean, shadowed it's going to be, and you apply that in your painting and building building state before the weathering applies and this is where we've reached this stage now I'm going with heavy shading it's going to be reasonably matte but I'm going to want heavy black panels a little bit of paint chipping a little bit of dirt build up and definitely water slide decals never underestimate how those tiny decals less than a mil that builds up definition detail and a story of where panels lie how things are lifted up for maintenance the story of the design build the storage on the white base who interacts with the Gundam and all of those stars for you know mobile suits shot down what force it belongs to the name of the machine and insignia of the army that's a part of it's not something that you notice and look at immediately and study closely a decal that's a mistake or silvered will stand out but something that blends in looks quite nicely 
It's water slide, it's dabbed with a bit of tissue, and it's given a clear coat. Building upon that, every bit of weathering I do is definition. It's more detail, it's more story added. We've got a wash of black ink, a build up of streaks of other colors of enamel and oil base washes and then they're all sealed with individual layers of a semi gloss finish once the final pigment the weathering pencil weathering pencils i just use makeup pencil for um, your face uh, women cosmetics just tapping it lightly to get paint chips highlighting the corners with a black fine pastel pencil you could do the same thing with painting the model black bit of hairspray and scraping the edges that also gets a wonderful edge looking at the anime cells again you get this heavy line art of it being drawn the edges are very very dark it's something that you don't see with a real mechanism the real gundam large objects they don't have that but it appears in the show and it becomes a bit more stylized but it still looks pretty awesome in person if you really like a layer if you've done it with a wash if you've done it with a pencil you seal it in a clear gloss you don't like it you can actually clean it up or remove it with a q-tip and thinner it's, look at it and you can see how it builds up feels right you keep it looks wrong you scrub it away even though it's three pre-thought out and you studied a lot of real examples of weathering you've looked at a lot of weathered models it comes with experience the first few models you weather is going to be overly done it's heavy you're only going to apply one or two methods of weathering and it's terrible weathering normally it's almost not noticeable when you apply it and even on a white or a yellow model where things just really stand out and it's super obvious something absolutely tiny and it's just virtually not noticeable from a distance or at all it's all of these steps of the shading, the decals, every layer of weathering, which is almost numerous, they build up to tell a story. You'll hear this many, many times, less is more, but less built up in layers for sure. A lot of people keep modeling as a pastime. They want to finish in a certain goal. Some models are built very quickly. It's painted. There's a bit of chipping. There's a wash, top coat, finished throw it out there and some models I treat to be a bit special like this one where I go all out and give it the absolute full treatment. The weathering part is the absolute longest for me as I do it in layers and some of these layers can take a day or so to dry for the oils and then I need to put a top coat. With my theory of allowing things to chemically dry and harden over 12 to 24 hours this makes it a bit complicated in stretching a project out for weeks even though months with every weekend one layer weathering occurring and uh, this just compounds and I'm looking at it constantly but this is where you get that fine thought process of how you're going to progress and each step improves once that final layer of matte coat is applied and I've given it a few days to dry that final snap fit and PVA gluing of color separated parts is worthwhile and it mounts on the base this last image that we're looking at right now is the pigment weathering you can buy modeling brand pigments but I found this lovely makeup weathering set of all these earth and flesh tones and it's simply building it up on a rough matte coat touching it up with clear coat to seal a lot of it blows away what remains remains another build up and another clear coat until it's finished this happens in one sitting on a single part and I'm only putting dirt that may touch the earth at the bottom of the shield and the feet maybe the knees nowhere else in the mech as looking at scale you're not going to see dust and mud fly 10 15 meters in the air this is a dangerous state of going too deep in a project in losing interest or not having the confidence to document as i'm making a video or continue on as the technique's a bit advanced you've done really well to this point you don't want to ruin it or you don't want to overdo the weathering or not quite in the mindset you were when you're just in that zone building it and having clairvoyance of how you wanted to achieve it this may go in a box stack somewhere and not seeing the daylight for months days to years or you may be able to choose to finish it it's the difference between a professional modeler and a hobbyist where a pro looks to turn over work with that goal of self-promotion profit content creation where we're just going on a journey and making something that peers appeals and expresses us whatever 
maybe your reason for cutting plastic if it stays on your shelf and no one ever sees it or if you put it out there on social media a show and have the whole world to see it you know the work that you've put into it you know the effort you've gone into developing yourself and reaching this stage in your hobby and modeling community i have to admit that i'm pretty pleased with this build how i've envisioned what i wanted to achieve at the start make a video do a model that's really really hard tempt the caravan entry level rx78 unfortunately these are not any really longer given out and i can't display this at official bandai events it is finished somewhat i'm really happy and i'm fairly happy with the progression that i'm going through in the hobby the only way you're going to get better and improve and by no means i'm putting myself in the pedestal very high or a master or anything silly like that i'm going on a journey like everyone else there's a lot of heights that is just absolutely unachievable to me and a lot of modelers i highly respect and admire though the fact that the more often you paint apply paint on models make good models make terrible terrible bad models and cut plastic daily you'll improve but it's not quite enough to just cut plastic daily there are people out there that are known to do the same thing over and over year by year decade by decade and they don't improve and it's more so the case of going outside of your comfort level uh, learning experimenting researching and uh, seeking uh, constructive criticism but useful constructive criticism from the right source there's a lot of people out there that want to push their style and themselves and they're not quite good to help you improve or not interest in your improvement but more so their self-improvement and getting a validation it can be very tricky to find someone to look up to and uh, get mentored it's just good to just hang out people in person or go from modeling community to modeling community there are really good ones out there uh, they're not often seen they suddenly appear and they slowly burn out and fizzle it's good to be a nomad and travel around most communities are kind of crappy avoid famous or popular modelers they're all selling something especially me don't trust me buy my stuff like subscribe give me attention validation all that obnoxious business <laughs> uh, going down a very nihilistic and dark path here another unfortunate aspect of putting this much element into your work is uh, sharing it and displaying it I've achieved what I wished here and the video will probably get anywhere between several hundred to a couple uh, 5,000 views at most and I know only about 5% is gonna watch it all the way through see the work I put into it and appreciate it you're gonna get a lot of uh, naysayers and people projecting what they want it to be and and the direction they wish to go into and they generally get into uh, petty attacks about your appearance calling you a clown or that it's not to their taste media or style none of that it matters you're the only one in the world that knows what you've exactly put into that model uh, most of the documentation I've done for many of my other models don't even come close to what has gone through my head and what I've done to the model uh, this one very extensively but there's even more things that I've cut out and self-centered and not mentioned in this uh, video but I'm just still absolutely pleased the whole process of modeling for me personally at least is the romance of the process changing something small developing and optimizing my style and looking back and going that how much of a vastly different modeler if I've gotten better or regressed have gotten worse to how I was two years ago with the current media I'm using my state of mind how much time I have and where I'm roughly moving on I've gone through some rough things with uh, moving and lack of time with work but I feel that I've definitely put the time into this project <laughs> unfortunately it's a 200 yen very poor model that funnily enough has in my viewing and understanding of the anime Mobile Suit Gundam in the proportions and detail I finally like it's not articulated it's nothing too special and boy I definitely put way too much effort and work into it that I will never see that time back funnily enough it was time well invested grown somewhat and these new ideas I've got I could carry on to new models and I've definitely tenfold not improved but got more confidence in masking and weathering that's not overly done
this use of my time with the chosen model chosen media use for the certain chosen subject has in conclusion created a space in time that depicts my envisionment of what the RX-78 is and how it would look at some point in its journey during the anime which I would always repeat enjoy and like to watch in the end this is just a silly hobby little plastic robots nothing important and for anyone who's spent as much time and attention in the hobby familiar with the techniques and put a different relationship or a similar relationship with their own modeling can have a look at it and have a rough idea with more time you put in your own work and you observe others you can appreciate and see more when you're seeing work many punches above your own weight you can see the brilliance behind it and other models that appear to be amazing at first glance the flaws that definitely jump out and another thing that might be dangerous is heading into this scheme and realm of elitism and the most important aspect of this hobby of passing time is enjoying it and finding worth in the time you're spending in it some do want to stagnate and just go through the motions, pass time for whatever reasons, pleasures, or if they're going through something and it's bringing them relief. They should definitely be left alone, though I highly doubt that I'll bring any offence as uh, such a mindset would not necessarily watch this video to this length. If you have, uh, hey, how are you going? Sometimes you change your mind and your relationship with modeling does change and you want to go from going through the motions to improving oneself or you might reach a dead end and wish to go through the motions and make some easy models to take it off yourself, a mental break, uh, go through the process, practice and throw some things out before you dedicate to a very strong project especially if you've had a, a failure or a letdown which can be a devastating blow to one's confidence and ego the more times we go through this process practice improve we get more confidence and the biggest barrier in this hobby is a mental one we look at it and think airbrushing weathering improvement reaching a certain stage is not possible because we feel we can't do it uh, anything can be learnt each step to build this model is very very easy it's learning and replicating the effect mastering it making it your own and blending it in the way that you like to do it in the style that makes sense to you and combining all of these techniques and knowledges and sets going through the motion will produce work that you find worthy to put on your shelf and to show off to others on your little plastic toy robots. A lot of you new and old would have seen the layman's Gunpla flowchart guide to processes of uh, building the builds, glue, painting, modification, top coating, weathering process and some people see it as a universal guide. It's what makes sense to that gentleman and everyone who has gone through the motions a few times have figured out how the mediums work interactively with each other and the process that makes sense to them mentally in building up layers and they create their own flow chart for a particular project or in general which is what their style entails and depending on project they can get as simple or very complex in conclusion this video is an insight to mine though this may change as time goes on and I learn new things this has definitely become stupidly philosophical but when I go into my own space my own mind my own little world these are the sort of things that spin through my head when I'm just blank out work on the model and the process just guides me through and hours melt away and work starts to get produced photos taken and I chuck it up as a work in progress feeling good after my attempts that day or someone sitting in the workshop with me chatting away about some nonsense as progress is being made and a very enjoyable afternoon evening has been achieved just before I have to return to work or real life thank you very much for watching and until next time catch you later